With all the success and financial windfall that the Permian Basin provides the state of New Mexico, there are some communities on the front lines that are struggling to maintain their identity and infrastructure. The town of Jowl, New Mexico, which according to the 2010 census had a population of 2,047, started out as a farming community that just happened to be geographically located on top of huge oil and gas deposits. Jowl began as a, a ranch community. The old story goes that the Cowden Ranch went down Texas, bought a herd of cattle from James A. Lynch. Had the J-A-L brand on it. Hence the name Jow. When uh, gas was discovered out here in the late 20s, a couple of guys out of Clyde, Texas came out here and started El Paso Natural Gas, which really started Jow and has been uh, an oil and gas community since. At one time, it was called the gas capital of the world. Stephen Aldridge is not a typical mayor by any stretch of the imagination. This retired teacher was born and raised in Jowl, and the residents have chosen him to help navigate them through these challenging times and create a plan for the future. With all the advantage of additional revenue comes the challenge of how to mitigate the activity on smaller communities. Now, do we have the option of staying like we were? No. No, with, with change, you, you can become embattled by it or you can embrace it and try to guide it. And we've chosen to do the latter. All across the United States, our country's infrastructure has become a hot topic and an issue that needs to be addressed urgently. With state and local governments, projects are sometimes hard to prioritize when there are limited funds. But when the money begins to roll in, Officials start to look at the same issues with a different view and plan of attack. The city of Jowl in the past has had trouble trying to rebuild infrastructure and, and other things because the gross receipts that we receive from the state off of products sold and whatnot was very low. Uh, just 10 years ago, uh, the amount of money coming into the city coffers might have been as low as $50,000 a month maybe $600,000 a year. At the present time, due to the large economy that's going on uh, and some areas that we've annexed into the city, the city is now averaging this year $775,000 a month. So our economy here is booming and that is saving us because it gives us some money to actually rebuild infrastructure. What we're doing here in the city, we're in about a $5 million uh, paving project. We've directed the contractor, he can only do two or three blocks at a time. So rather than close a whole street, he goes in, works those two or three blocks, gets the base back in there and then tries to get it paved. Then he moves on to the next area. It's a lot more expensive because if he could do 10 blocks at a time, it would be very easy. But what happens is people can't get into their houses. So we've made that dedication to the uh, citizens of the city that we're just going to try to keep it short blocks, do as minimum as we can. But it's very difficult with traffic. One of the hardest and immediate issues to address when a small town has a huge surge in population is housing. It's difficult to put a number on the current population of Jowl as the numbers of oil field workers are in a constant state of flux. The ripple effect creates a price range that many locals cannot afford and they struggle to find affordable housing solutions. Trying to provide affordable housing to employees here and the schools having teacherages. If you go to Carlsbad and look at the number of available teaching spots they had open at the beginning of the year, they would have people apply and they would hire them and within a month or two would leave because they couldn't afford fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars a month, two thousand, three thousand dollars a month because the reality of the area is that's what they can get so that's what they're going to charge with that much regard to the effects that it does have on those in the public sector like school teachers, police, fire, city employees that aren't making uh, the salary scale that those in the oil and gas industry are.
what the city has done is we have gone out and purchased uh, eight manufactured homes, brand new. We've uh, developed an area, and uh, those are going to be for our employees. One of the problems we have is like police officers. The, uh, due to the traffic and the volume of accidents and whatnot, the council has approved to add a couple of police officers. When you go out and look for police officers to find certified ones, they need a place to live if they move here from out of town. Well, they couldn't afford to move here to start with, and we can't afford to have them driving all the way from Hobbs down here every day. It just gets very expensive, hard on our vehicles. So we've gone out and purchased these houses uh, for our employees. And right now, of the eight that we have, looks like we're going to fill up probably seven of them right off the start. One solution, providing relief to the housing shortage, is often referred to in the oil and gas industry as man camps. These modular buildings that create a tiny mobile village offer restaurants, bars, workout rooms, movie theaters, with most amenities available 24 hours a day and seven days a week. It's an expensive endeavor and a gamble on the longevity of the Permian Basin sustainability. In early 2019, uh, after a lot of due diligence and trying to figure out what the next plays were in Permian Basin, uh, we chose Jowl, New Mexico. And in early 2019, we started the permitting process, which allowed us to start shipping buildings down from Canada to Jowl uh, approximately mid-2019, um, and then to begin the setups in late 2019 of the facility. When we went through the design process on this, this facility, um, we've actually designed it to be 900 people. Uh, or 900 rooms. Um, we've got the, the infrastructure and everything put in for 900. Each one of our dorms is expandable by approximately 100 beds. So we've got foundations and stuff in place for the second 300, which would take it to 600. And then if future demands require it, then we, we've got the opportunity with the, the water and infrastructure to go ahead and expand out to another 300 beds on top of that to get to the 900. Um, as far as making that decision, it's, it's driven by occupancy. So what we have that's a little bit different than a lot of the, the housing solutions um, in the Permian Basin and out in this area particularly, uh, there's a lot of RV and there's a lot of double up uh, type scenarios. So when I say double up, it's, it's a two occupant room um, that, that basically you have one person that stays there during the day and then another one that stays there at night and that's how they rotate their shifts. Um, in Jowl, there's, there's about 600 to 700 uh, beds available between RV spaces and other lodge and, and existing motels in the area. This is a huge expansion. I mean, the, the amount of people that could and will be here over the next three to five years is going to be larger than the population of Jowl um, if the Permian continues to grow and continues to boom like it is right now. Water in the Southwest has become a very hot commodity and a major source of debate, legal challenges, and a top priority for all state governments involved to figure out in order to maintain and share the future of a dwindling major resource. Van Myrick is the public works director for the city of Jowl. So the, the thick red stuff, that's 90% sand, so we do this, exercise this valve several times to get this thick sand to come out. The new JAL booster station, this is a three pump redundancy. Uh, it helps us during emergencies, say one of these pumps go down, I've got two other pumps and controls that I can work with. Uh, we just finished this facility, it was part of a USDA rural development project. We're standing in about a $500,000 facility right now. JAL's water does come from the small aquifer called the JAL water aquifer. Uh, it is recognized by the state engineer. Uh, that aquifer, about a quarter of its existence is in the state of New Mexico. The rest of it is to the south of us in Texas. Uh, in New Mexico, with that aquifer, you have to have water rights in order to drill into that and extract the water. Where in Texas, it's a right to, to claim it. So if you own the land in Texas, you can drill a well and, and collect that water. Here, we don't have that luxury. We have to have water rights. JAL currently has about 1,500 acre feet of water rights. Uh, it is sufficient for our, um, for our population right now. However, if we continue to grow at the rate we're growing, uh, it's possible that it might not be enough. Our problem right now is we have old wells. Uh, the wells are, 
dating from the 1960s all the way up to late 80s. Uh, those whales have passed their prime. Uh, we have one, four whales that are operational right now, actually six that belong to the city. Uh, and we would expect or want those whales to produce three to 400 gallons a minute. We we'll only have one whale right now that'll produce 400 gallons a minute. So at present time, we're making between seven and 900 gallons a minute, where 10 years ago, uh, Jow's well field was producing about 12 to 1400 gallons a minute. So with the past water studies, Jow has a 40 year water study. We're working to redo that right now. In that study and engineering reports that we have, provided to us, we feel that we've got anywhere from 40 to 50 years of water left in the gel aquifer. Uh, we are currently seeking uh, other areas, other water aquifers uh, to drill into so that we can sustain uh, the water for the citizens of Jal past 40 or 50 years. Healthcare in rural America has always had its challenges. Logistics, staffing, and resources are some of the common problems with which the small towns are struggling. The JAL Clinic has grown with the demand and continues to adapt with the times and plan for the future. Presently, we don't have a doctor on staff. We have two nurse practitioners, but in New Mexico, a nurse practitioner can act alone. They don't have to have an oversight of a, of a physician. With the oil and gas situation in our area, Jow Clinic is very busy. Normally, Jow has approximately 1,500 to 1,700 people, and now we're, we're looking at probably close to five to 6,000 people. Jow Clinic is not set up as a free clinic. However, we do have what you call a sliding fee to assist the people that are, you know, economically challenged. We do have special things that we can do for them. We have an in-house pharmacy that allows us to be able to, at a lesser price, give medications to people that don't have insurance or have needs right that minute. We have no federal funding. We have no state funding at this particular time. We work closely with the cities and the schools to try to provide services. We are in the process. We are working with architects and we are working to build a new facility, not to put in place of our clinic here, but to add services to our community. And we're hoping to get started pretty soon. The longevity of the Permian Basin sustainability is anyone's guess. Numbers are thrown around between five and 25 years. However, some oil and gas companies are already shutting down operations in the region due to the ever-volatile global oil and gas prices. No matter how one looks at the situation in Jal, this small town in New Mexico is going through a crisis with its livelihood and its economy in a constant state of unknown. Many leaders of the community have spent their entire lives in Jal and are very aware of the 100-year history with oil and gas. These days, the powers that be are preparing for the future by learning from the past. Yeah.